Whenever I see a massive company start to show signs of failure and going down the path of collapse, I'm often reminded of the late great blockbuster, God rest its soul, the pioneer who really did it first, a company deemed too big to fail, snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. And since then, there's been a couple other companies that have gone down a similar path, and right now there is a new one pulling a blockbuster, Niji Sanji. Whether or not you're a huge VTuber fan, you're at least familiar with the industry. VTubing is huge, and it has been for years now. It's worth m hundreds of millions of dollars, if not billions. And in this space, there are two agencies that stand atop the others as kind of the titans of the space. It's Hololive and Niji Sanji. Now, Niji Sanji has an English branch that right now is going through one of the most foul displays of mismanagement, cruelty, and just downright terrible business practice I've seen in quite some time. It's a real head-scratcher because every single day they continue to dig themselves a deeper and deeper hole. It's like this company is run by a Voltorb that is obsessed with using the move self-destruct. It is just bent on <laughs> burying itself. So I definitely wanted to talk about it now that I'm fully caught up on the situation. There is so much to go over. There's a really good video that breaks down like the main timeline here for what happened. It comes from Mujin. I'll go ahead and play the main catalyst for this. And then I'm going to actually turn to a series of Reddit comments that were left that I think go over the entire history of the Niji Sanji problems that have come to light. And then fast forward to what just happened last night where an even bigger controversy just unfolded. So there's, there really is a lot to cover, and all of it's looking terrible for Niji Sanji, the English branch, that is. Now, when I first was made aware of this on stream a little while ago, I said that I'm not even surprised by it because a lot of these VTuber agencies have a history of some very terrible things going on behind the scenes. Many of you know I started my own agency for YouTubers and streamers a while back called Human Media Group. We recently merged with Jimmy Here's group and became Mana Talent Group. And over the years, I've actually seen a couple of these VTuber contracts that they were formerly under. And it is downright evil what some of them were doing to the talent that they manage. I obviously can't get into the specifics of it, but it is some horrible stuff. That Some, some really bad stories and bad things that we saw from that. But even being familiar with some of the horror stories that we'd learned over the years from some agencies, I was shocked to see just how bad Niji Sanji was here. So I want to focus more on the most recent stuff that just happened, but I still would like to give you a foundation for what started all of it. So for that, I'll turn to this clip from Mujin's video that breaks down this whole situation and just give you the catalyst. This was the, the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, fundamentally, that kicked off this world war against Niji Sanji, all of which they brought upon themselves by being just complete, unreasonable, evil assholes. It all started on Christmas Day, a day you're meant to enjoy with family. It couldn't have gone worse. The trigger for this entire catastrophe? A music video. Selen had worked on a music video for her fans. She paid $15,000 out of her own pocket because Niji Sanji wouldn't fund it. And on top of not funding it, what do they do? <laughs> they take down the video in under 24 hours. No explanation to the public. Remember what I said about corporations and how they have access to all social media of their VTubers? Yeah, that's what happened, and she couldn't do anything about it. All she could realistically do under the very tight contracts and NDAs of a corporation is make up a vague tweet, sort of explaining what's going on to her fans. Selin was a VTuber that was very popular and was with Niji Sanji's English branch, and she had a history of being super, super involved in her community. Uh, she called them Dragoons, and she wanted to do a special music video for the community and paid $15,000 out of her own pocket to make it happen for the fans. And she posted it, thinking that it was totally okay to do because she self-funded it when Niji Sanji declined to, but they made a big stink about it and took the video down, even though she had permission for the song that was used and even though it came from her own piggy bank instead of theirs, they didn't like that it didn't get the proper approval through the internal management. Because the way Niji Sanji runs their company, it's, it's with a fucking iron fist. You need permission to fart on stream as a VTuber under that agency. And since she didn't get all of the proper channels to sign off on it, they took it down. Which, of course, was a huge hit to sell in in her community because they worked very hard on that project. 
So she made a vague statement explaining that, well, management took it down, but she actually encouraged her community to re-upload it uh, across the platform because she wanted it to live on. And she assumed that would be okay because, you know, it's not on her channel anymore, so they shouldn't have a problem with it, but they did. This soured relations between Selin and Niji Sanji, and behind the scenes it led to a lot of harassment and bullying from Niji Sanji against Selin. Because out of nowhere, on December 27th, she tweets on her account, I apologize for the silence, I have been in the hospital after an accident and will be staying there for a few days to be under supervision. I just got back access to my phone yesterday. Now, of course, people were happy she was out of the hospital, but the concern was still there. It was very vague and people didn't know what was going on. The Selen Tatsuki Termination Notice. I will not be silenced anymore. On December, I was hospitalized for an attempt that was caused by a buildup of bullying from within and being in a toxic and poor environment for numerous months that led to my breaking point. I requested to leave first, but on more neutral terms on the 26th of January. Obviously, I chopped this up and Frankenstein together this little segment to give you a very concise timeline. So, Selen made a post about how she's going to need to take some time away after an accident that landed her in the hospital. Everything was very vague. Eventually, she explains that she's been discharged from the hospital. And then shortly thereafter, Niji Sanji English Branch announced the termination of Selen Tatsuki. The termination letter is very poorly explained as to why she's exactly being fired. Now, when it comes to VTubers, there's two ways that departing a company goes. One is a graduation stream where they graduate from the company and it means that they are leaving on good terms. So they have like a big send off farewell stream and that's the end of it. Sail off into the sunset, sunshine and rainbows. It's a happy ending. You get the good ending. Or there's this, where you just get publicly terminated and just fucking slapped down by the company like this. And in this case, obviously, Selen got the latter, where they just said, she's gone. Now, if you're not familiar with VTubing, when you sign with an agency like Niji Sanji, they basically own you. They give you your VTuber avatar, they own all of your socials, your channels, everything. You are unable to operate with any type of autonomy you are under their thumb and they basically own all of it. So she lost access to everything here and she actually didn't even know she was being terminated. She found out when this tweet dropped. They didn't even notify her. And the tweet, again, is very poorly explaining things. They, they talk about selling like it's a fucking Ikea furniture tutorial on how to put it together. It's just like talking about a bunch of nonsense about authorization flows not making sense and whatever. And then they cite like the music video and how when she made the tweet that management took it down, it damaged their brand and caused problems for them, this and that. It was just fucking stupid. A bunch of dirty barnacles. And then Selen went to her original account, her original brand of Doki Bird, to explain what actually happened is that due to the harassment and bullying and the toxic environment Niji Sanji created, she made an attempt on her own life and landed in the hospital. Luckily, she survived and is still with us today, but she no longer would be silenced by this company and bullied into being silent. So she started to explain what happened behind the scenes that led to all of this stress and all of these problems. She lawyered up and is engaged in now a legal battle with Niji Sanji, presumably, that is being worked on. And that is where all of this really started. That's when the floodgates opened. And with all of this information out there now, people were able to go back to some previous Niji Sanji talent with a finer tooth comb and see that the signs of a sinking ship had been there for quite a while. Signs of a company that mistreats its employees, signs of a company that is mismanaged and just downright diabolical behind closed doors. And I want to go over that because we have a lore master in the comments section of a live stream fails clip that I think does an extraordinary job of just laying all of this information out. So, our guide is Weebshitter69. A, a great name for a, a great philosopher. So, Weebshitter starts by explaining what Niji Sanji is and how big Niji Sanji is. And then takes us back to the past. March 10th, 2023, one of Niji Sanji's newer talents, Zion Lanza, was terminated, which again is being fired, publicly and then put out this bullet point list of the infractions that they accrued 
And at the time, people sided with Niji Sanji, but then stated that the way they handled it was a little unprofessional, especially coming from a multi-million dollar company, and just overall not great. But since Zion no longer had access to their accounts, she returned to her original account that she had before joining, which was Sayu Synchrosity. Now, if you've followed this story for a while, you've probably seen this meme tossed around about Sayu was right, or Sayu trying to warn us, and this is what they're referring to. On that account, she revealed more information about her own experiences inside the company, hinting at a toxic environment, incompetent management and bullying, stealth suspensions, etc., and she further stated that she hopes other talent realize their own worth and that they deserve better. Some people sided with Sayu, but most didn't at the time. Then in May of 2023, Selin Tatsuki hosts a contest letting her fans design her next outfit. Niji Sanji management tried to put a stop to the very act of competing or compensating the artists for their designs, while also trying to assert that artists who enter the contest should hand over the rights to the artwork for free. Selin refuses this notion and pays the winners out of her own pocket instead. She, a while after that, hinted that management no longer allowed her to organize events anymore, which sounds about par for the course for a company like Niji Sanji, where July 8th of 2023, Nina Kosaka graduated, meaning they left on good terms, had a farewell stream, but then comes back later with V Shoujo, which is another VTuber agency, as Matara Khan. Uh, that, that information will be pertinent later. August 27th of 2023, Mista Rias also graduates, saying that he was burnt out and no longer had any drive, and reappeared shortly after as K9 Kudo as the first male VTuber in V Shoujo. Again, information that'll be in important here soon. Once they settled in, statements from both of them saying how surprised they were that management and V Shoujo were actually helping them achieve their creative aspirations started to come out, and how they finally feel like they have worth after being repeatedly told by some that they did not strongly echoing Sayu's previous statements, even revealing that they did not receive the YouTube plaques on their own channels during their time in Niji Sanji, but rather that the company kept them. So, Niji Sanji kept the plaques from the YouTube channels, meaning the 100,000 subscriber play button or the gold play button for a million. The talent didn't even see that, which is just such a scummy thing to do, obviously. Now, while Sayu was a relatively new member of Niji Sanji at the time, Nina and Mista were considered cornerstone, thus the tides started to slowly turn. And then they jump a bit forward in the timeline, and that's when they fast forward to the sell-in Christmas catastrophe with the, the music video that got taken down by management. And then in January, with the departure of Pomu Rainpuff, more people started to wonder how bad things were at Niji Sanji. Pomu Rainpuff was one of their biggest VTubers and shocked everyone when they announced their graduation in January. And it was even more shocking when people didn't hear from Selin since they were friends. So that's when people started to worry about her safety. And then in February, another liver named Kyo Kaneko announced the graduation, which again brought the community into an uproar, wondering why is there so many people departing all at once here? Is there like a waiting list, like this fucking purgatory or something with people waiting to go to the other side? And then on February 5th, Niji Sanji released that termination notice. And that's when Doki Bird talked about what actually happened with her hospitalization following her unalive attempt that was built up from the stress that Niji Sanji put upon her and a lot of information started to come out both from artists and other people who had previously worked with them claiming that working with Niji Sanji was never very good there was delay in payments NDAs being sent multiple times with the wrong name just so many different things but Selin had always paid the artists out of her own pocket during this period of turmoil while trying to work with Niji Sanji. And following all of this new information coming to light, the public was understandably outraged. Because this is just some deplorable garbage. The dam broke and they were flooded with tons and tons of angry fans. The tornado blew through and picked up 500 septic tanks and the shitstorm that came with it was something that Niji Sanji couldn't have possibly predicted. So Niji Sanji's sta like stakeholders started to suffer. They lost several sponsorships because of all of this. Apparently their, their stock price, like their valuation or whatever, started to plummet as well. It was a huge hit to their company and it only continues to get worse by the day. So, Selin revealed that she had spent like $250,000 of her own money on projects throughout the last year there, so she made no profit. And a very interesting piece of information that people brought up is that in December of 2022, 
Mista Rias had a slip of the tongue revealing that talent only gets 1% of merch sales and other reports stating that it was a whole 2%. And this serves to showcase that Niji Sanji doesn't just harass and bully their talent directly, they also financially fuck them. That is downright criminal. Only giving 1% or 2% if they're feeling gracious enough of merch sales to the talent is mind-boggling. And I saw a couple people defending this. And let me just go ahead and take you in real quick because it looks like you blew in from Stupidville. That is unacceptable. Yes, the VTubers here don't actually own their avatar or anything. That does belong to Niji Sanji and they signed the contract and agreed to that. But without them, that merch doesn't move. They are still the sole force for why that merch sells in the first place, thus should be compensated fairly. If they don't make that tweet about the merch being available, if they don't talk about it on stream, zero people buy it. And to only give them a 1 or at most 2% cut of that is just laughably pathetic and just de it's just depraved, really. And this also led to a meme that you've probably seen if you've been keeping up with it about how Niji Sanji's CEO was too busy on his yacht that he built on the back of his talent through exploiting them financially. It comes from this, this, like, this information, where apparently the CEO had flexed that he had a yacht that he had recently purchased or something. I, I didn't look into that too deeply, but I keep seeing that pop up everywhere with people citing different sources for it. I believe that that's probably something that happened because they are legitimately just exploiting their talent here. This is a completely unacceptable split. Under no circumstances should this be allowed. That is crazy. And what's even crazier is I know they're not the only ones that do that to their talent. In the VTuber space, I have seen some very unfair deals. Now, not this bad. I, I will say this is exceptionally horrible. But I wasn't surprised to learn that when I first saw that they take 98% of merch sales because these VTuber agencies look for every possible way, at least, the, at least the contracts I've seen from some of them, to squeeze every dime possible out of that talent while not letting them get the lion's share most of the time. I, I'm having to tiptoe around this a little bit because I don't, I, I don't want to get in any hot water with it. But yeah, it fucking sucks. That is awful. Now back to the Weeb Shitter archives here. Weeb Shitter then talks about what happened last night, which is what I want to talk about as well. So, the clip that he is referring to is Doki Bird was streaming. She has now come back to streaming, trying to, you know, just have a good time with her community again, and things are going extremely well. She went from 10,000 subs to now over 500,000 subscribers. Her first stream back had over 100k concurrent. Absolutely fucking crushing it. And last night during her stream, which was her first gaming stream since being back, she had to end it early because fellow livers Alira Pandora, who'd been quiet since the announcement of Selen's termination, started a stream at the same time called A Message from Niji Sanji. And during the stream, she was joined by other Niji Sanji VTubers, Ike Eveland and Vox Akuma. Both of them were thought to be friends of Selen or Doki Bird. And they read a totally not scripted message expressing how sad and betrayed they felt that Selin had given out personal information like real names and other required information about livers and her legal document that she sent over to Niji Sanji and some of them stating that they had thoroughly read through it as well as presenting discord snippets between Selin and management when it was presented by them thinking that it would absolve them. Now, I truly believe that Niji Sanji forced them to make this video. I think that they were 100% pressured into making this statement. I don't think the VTubers chose this, nor do I think they really believe what they were saying, because you'd, you'd have to be on some goddamn idiot juice to think that that was a good idea. Obviously, this is just inviting everyone in the community to throw tomatoes at you and scream boo boo you stink like the it is a terrible statement from them and it <laughs> the obvious big problem here one that doki bird also had to call attention to is that it seems niji sanji seemingly shared confidential information with these parties that are unrelated to the issues which could potentially include her medical information 
which is fucking illegal. You can't do that. You can't just share this personal information. You can't break NDAs, and you certainly can't share sensitive medical information. There's protections in place for that. That's a highly illegal thing to do. Meanwhile, goofballs at fucking Niji Sanji here were real loosey-goosey with Doki Bird's information. Confidential information, it seems. So I'll go ahead and play the clip uh, from Doki Bird when she learned about all of this. Um, despite everything that has happened, it I was very sad to find out a personal document that was only shown between three different parties had to be uh, uh, leaked out. Um, because it was a document I made for my lawyer and it was a document that was not supposed to be shown anywhere else but to me and my lawyer and to the lawyer to the lawyers on on the other side and we were promised it was not to be shown anywhere else because that's how the process is supposed to work in a fucking legal battle where you're not sharing confidential information with others unrelated to the fucking legal battle taking place. But I guess Niji Sanji, being the goobers they are, for some reason tried to weaponize that information by giving it to Selen's friends and m most likely, I'll, I'll say there's a high chance, forcing them to make that video a message from Niji Sanji, which is a terrible video that I don't think they wanted to make because they have to have known it'd be a disaster for them on a personal level. Like, their their careers are definitely taking a hit because of that. Like, and I feel like they'd know that for sure. But it's, I feel like Niji Sanji was trying to strong-arm them into doing it because from the sound of things, it looks like anyone that signs with Niji Sanji is basically just their fucking hostage for the entire time you're with the agency. Doki Bird went on Twitter to once again say that it was never supposed to be shown to anyone other than me, the lawyer, and any other relevant lawyers. It was a private document with personal information and then expressed concern, wondering if her medical and hospital records were also released without her consent since that was also promised to be kept private. She says she's currently talking to her lawyer and thankfully only her diagnosis and reason for hospital stay was reported without further private info being disclosed. So that's currently where everything's at right now. And Niji Sanji is bleeding out. So much so that the CEO made his own little YouTuber apology video, which is trash. I was going to play you clips from his apology video, but with Niji Sanji, you never really know what stupid shit they're going to do, so I didn't want to risk getting a strike on it for uh, covering it. So instead, I'll just go ahead and refer to the article here. One of the main things that he apologizes for off-rip is that after announcing the termination of Selen, there was a notice that was published saying that the impact this would have on the company's performance would be negligible. And he says that this was a misunderstanding and they just, they used inconsiderate word choice for it and recognizes that Selin was integral to the growth of Niji Sanji English branch. And really the whole thing more just seems like a statement to investors, like on a business side of things, as opposed to like a legitimate apology for anything that happened. To me, it comes across as super corpo soulless suit speak, like, yeah, we terminated Selen, whatever, that's, that's, well, who cares? What really matters is the investors not losing faith. So we'll make this video to try and regain that investor faith so we can keep raking in those big bucks. He promises, like, very vague things about change is coming, we need better systems in place that we're working towards this and that. But none of it really comes across as sincere, especially considering that if you really wanted to make a good faith, like, strong stance, like, we need to change, start with monetarily. It's now come out that your talent gets fucked financially when it comes to their split on, like, merch sales and things like that. If you really want to make a good faith, like, convincing, compelling argument that you're going to change, start there. I would like to see that because you can easily showcase that one. It's going to be hard to convey to the public that you're changing things behind the scenes because, again, that's behind the scenes. It's it's always going to be something that the public's never going to be fully privy to. But your merch split with your talent, that is public. If you allow your VTubers to talk about it, they can say, hey, look, we just got raised up a ton of percentage when it comes to our merch split and we really appreciate that. It's a, it's a sign of goodwill, you know, and maybe things will get better in the future elsewhere too. 
But personally, I don't see them making any meaningful changes to company culture or the way things happen behind the doors or anything monetarily. I just don't see them really doing a whole lot to improve. And I think the community feels largely the same way, which is why Niji Sanji continues to fester here. Now, while they haven't fully gone under or anything of that nature, they are definitely trending in a downward death spiral at the moment where it seems more graduations are on the way, most likely, or perhaps even terminations to more talent. And the public is not super excited about the future of Niji Sanji English branch. Now, the English branch of Niji Sanji is just one component of it. Its biggest is still the Japanese sector. But I have to imagine if the English branch flounders and fails, it's going to be bad for Niji Sanji as a whole because it still was a sizable chunk of their company. And that's going to affect that side of things too. So it's definitely something that they wouldn't like to see go away, I would imagine. But it's looking like it's going towards that direction. So anyway, I just wanted to cover this a bit because it is it is a huge deal and one of those situations where a company that was really at a point where it was probably too big to fail is starting to fail. Truly by their own mismanagement, own problems, and own toxicity. And I'm wishing the absolute best for Doki Bird going forward. Hopefully the legal process she's engaged in is smooth and an easy W and hopefully your streams continue to pop off. So best of luck to her. And uh, yeah, that's really about it. See ya.